Hello friends, do you recognize it? This is the package of the Montblanc Calligraphy 139 Special Edition Flexible Nib. The nib is the relevant part of this pen, a pen that has been talked about so much. For many people, Montblanc represents a status symbol. For others, it's simply a beautiful pen. It took me a while to prepare this review. The pen is not an easy pen. It's not a pen that is immediately understood. Before starting, I addressed the Montblanc a criticism widely shared by the owners of this magnificent Fountain pen. The next time you make a special edition, put on a wink an ink wall of ink in the box. Possibly a special edition ink, as the nib of this Fountain pen is special. $20 is not lacking for the Montblanc customer, but $20 does not make the company poor, but it makes the buyer happy. The 149 is the biggest master stick series of all, bigger than the 144, uh, the 145 and the 136, Le Grand. It is a classic cigar shape and uh, an imposing tonnage. We don't know yet know if Montblanc will repurpose the special edition which uh, went on sale immediately and very few examples remained of the market. His name and the calligraphy logo stamped on the nib are more relevant than over all this type of fountain pen. In fact, it is a flexible nib with the calligraphic ambitions and uh, we will find uh, again in the course of the review all, this, uh, all these things that I have told you. Let's take a closer look at it. The 139, like the other master stooks, is made of a resin lacquered in black, and the external finish is similar to the other Montblancs. This pole controls the movement of the piston because the loading of this fountain pen is the piston type. The cap with the clip, similar to the other Montblanc models, has two small rings and the large one is stamped with the name Montblanc, while the brand logo appears on the top of the cap. The cap is unscrewed and we can see the ink inspection window well chiseled. The Montblanc 149 is an elegant pen and I have always liked it, even if uh, it is a little big for my hands. I like the shape and the squat closure of the handle, sharply trunked where the nib engages. It reminds me um, of a pen of the past, of those too deep into the inkwell before starting to write. I don't know dwell much on the aesthetic aspect because there are no big new big news. The pen is very beautiful and is identical to the other 139 master sticks produced by Montblanc. On the nib there is 4810 engraved and it is done according to art. This is an expensive panel, let's not hide it. But let's get to the most important aspect, the calligraphy nib. As you can see from this logo, which is identical to the saying of the we all make with Fountain pounds to announce the fluidity of the nib and that enhances the flexibility of the stroke, Montblanc intends to worm us that is a particular pen. The name he chose is also very specific. It is not a flexible nib, as they could easily have called it, but is a calligraphic nib. This precise choice must direct all of us to how to best use this fountain pen to avoid nasty surprise or disappointments. This does not mean that it is not a pen to use like all the others, but rather then it can do some things very well and is less suitable for doing others. A nib that starts from an extra fine line and that manages to widen up to a line B, but also beyond. 
And if that is not easy, is not immediate and intuitive, which require learning and a lot of practice, in a nutshell, it is not the nib that I would recommend to anyone who wants to buy the first Fintan pen. Alright, all flexible nibs have a problem to solve. The variation in flow in response to the widening of the prongs due to the pressure exerted. A rigid nib is satisfied with that constant and homogeneous flow. It does not have line variations and consequently the ink delivery is constant. Therefore, once the power supply has been calibrated according to the size of the nib, it does not need to be changed. But a flexible nib is a nib that moves, that approach and move away from the conductor, varying from time to time the tenuous hydrostatic balance that forms between the belly of the nib and the back of the power supply. With the tines closed, that is, closed together, it will need a length feed capable for satisfying a fine or extra fine starting line or degradation that the nib maintains in a restrained condition without any pressure exerted. But with the extended prongs, the ink request increases and the request is instantaneous as well as sudden, the abundant flow stop must result as soon as the prongs close. This operation happens continuously, two, three times for every second, and the technicians must assemble a writing unit capable of assisting these continuous variations. Otherwise, the nib will not be able to have enough ink when it widens, and we will see the two tracks instead of a nice full body stroke. And if it were not able to immediately restore ordinary flow, you would have a lot of ink on the sheet in uh, the immediate phase after releasing the tension of the prongs. In other words, you would have a nib that works poorly and is not even satisfying to the visual analysis of the stroke. The nib of the 149 calligraphy behaves quite well from this point of view, but presents a, but presents a couple of critical issues in the attack and the relays phases. The first manifests itself with a skipping that increases when used on a paper uh, with a very smooth finish, while the second, less annoying, occurs every time we release the pressure and the prongs are aligned again. A certain amount of ink tends to run out instantly, and you can see it in the release stretch that still appears a little uh, too consistent. To prevent some disappointment from buyers who shelled out close to $1,000 to take this pen, Fontaine pen uh, home, Montblanc called its nib calligraphy, prompting enthusiasts to use uh, it with a slowness and thoughtfulness of a calligraphic nib. Few rounds, few impulses met on paper, because the risk is to run out of ink too soon and find a huge skip when we decide to start the next word. We can also observe how the nib is very tight at the deep uh, to ensure a thin line as the starting line and to maximize the, develop the development of the stroke. This is good because a reserve of ink is always available for the first stroke variation, but not always sufficient to warranty, to warranty the second. In this context, uh, it is very important to choose an ink that works in synergy with the nib. I've found many of them and some give good results, while others have proved ineffective, increasing the defects that I've described above. Everything I'm describing refers to a very thorough test, and these little problems manifest themselves in the hands of the competent enthusiasts trying to squeeze the pen properly. The average user who requires the fun time pen to write without many frills would live 
happily ever after with this beautiful pen. But a pen made like this is both just for the sake of pushing it towards calligraphy and then let's go back. When I make the first few marks and keep it light, it actually looks like me an extra fine nib, but it's practically impossible to keep light because the nib is very sensitive. I have the two prongs so tightened in the restate, have a tendency to leave a line so fine that if a minimum pressure is not exerted, we will most likely obtain a very light, almost invisible mark. The quality of the workmanship is understood in the possibility it offers the calligrapher to tilt the nib on the right or left side, revealing different graphic ability from time to time. As I have already said, the 149 calligraphy is not an intuitive pen and not an even easy to make friends. In fact, using the nib in a frontal way, I have seen. If you use the nib line on the right side, I have an even different sign and the stroke change even I lie him down on the left side. A flexible nib that enhances the line from extra fine to extra bold, extra broad, very sensitive to the finish of the paper we use. Now, um, I'm going to write on a router paper. The other features of this main blank is that it does not particularly like speed but loves slow and white writing, similar to the intentional calligraphy names. From a certain point of view, the nib of the 149 is similar to the vintage nibs, but unfortunately remains distant in other way. Playing with this nib, I remember the vintage nibs because it is very sensitive and delicate, and requires a certain amount of expertise to get the best of itself. But when the nib began, begins to return to its rest and state, uh, resting state, uh, okay. After pressing, it behaves in a less harmonious way and artistic. He manif it manifests a certain lessness, which I believe is due to the ink flow rather than the mechanical response of the nib. I remember a similar problem at an ever flexible nib produced in the modern times. The Falcon nib, named with the uh, initials FA, or the pilot mounted on the custom and heritage series, in particular the size 10 one. The Falcon nib has a less nebulous behavior than the Montblanc calligraphy. It is more elastic and moves with clicks. Uh, uh, try to understand my words. Uh, well, the the one forty nine one is more harmonious, but both have a similar flow problems. To tell the truth, I had to put the pilot's one in the hands of a nib master to make it work at its best. Okay, I compare the calligraphy nib with a uh, with that of the Lamy, which is a stab one pound one. Perhaps it would be more convenient to compare it with the Montegrappa, which is a stab one pound five, and then they seemed closer to me. Uh, the stroke of the Mont Blanc is very broad, bold, <laughs> like you want. I love the cover that this is neighbor relies on the paper. And now enjoy writing using my pen at uh, 180 degrees. Now I would title title in front of the paper. Now I turn it on the right side and now on the left, and uh, I get a different way of the writing with different response characteristics. In conclusion, the Mont Blanc 139 calligraphy is a very beautiful fontaine pen. Uh. How betide it <laughs> with all money they ask me to buy it. When Mont Blanc launched this Niban market, there were a lot of expectations from the enthusiast audience. I have had it for a few months, and if I don't write only for with this pen, I'm quite sure that I still need some time and practice to understand find the border of this writing tool. 
Heaven today I don't feel capable of attributing strengths and weaknesses. Let's pretend that Marco carries the Ethereum a little to ride with a flexible knee. The only thing I know is that the 149 throws itself into the mix of vintage nibs for a direct comparison to make me understand its goodness and its characteristics. Would it be up to pair? I will tell you about the comparison in the next video I have prepared for you. If you like the videos, please subscribe to the channel because your click is the only way I can understand the liking of foreign friends. Unfortunately, it takes me twice as long to write reviews in English. So if you find my reviews and tests in English useful, I ask you to subscribe to the channel. If I see the number of subscribers outside Italy grow, I will understand that it is right to continue giving my time to reviews in English too. Otherwise, I'm sorry, but I will use my little time only for those in Italian. I hope that you can understand me. Sincerely, Marco Chiari. Thank you all, and now let's get started.